Thank you. Feeling a lot of emotions right now. Uh, I'm Sean. I'm from Hello Games. We're a tiny little indie studio. And we're a group of friends making No Man's Sky. A year ago, we announced our most ambitious game yet, Sea of Thieves. We've created a procedural universe. It's infinite, and it's one that everyone can share. Sea of Thieves is an emergent experience where you will have limitless adventures. This universe that we've created, it's, it's so vast, it's so boundless, it's actually infinite. And we don't even know what's out there. When the game releases, every player who picks up a pad and plays is going to help us discover a little bit more. In Sea of Thieves, you will embark on fantastic adventures with your friends, where you explore rich worlds in search of hidden treasure, where fantastical creatures will challenge your skill and teamwork, and where the potential threat of other players always lurks over the horizon. You know, it's kind of cool doing this on the, the E3 build because a lot of people would have seen just the quick three minutes that we showed or whatever, but it wasn't some level that we built or something like that, even though I think it looks quite nice in places. You know, it's a procedurally generated world. I think people watching this would wonder why you're showing this area again. Like, what's so special about demoing the game on this planet? Oh, no, no, it's just a place that looks nice. Despite being more than two years away from release with a huge list of unanswered questions as regards to what the core gameplay loop would involve or how the various vague systems within this supposedly infinite game would actually work. The few interviews given by Sean Murray at the time were horrendously vague and honestly it seemed like none of the outlets covering the game had any interest in pressing the issue with Hello Games. Welcome to July's IGN First. We are profiling No Man's Sky. We are celebrating the incredible potential of No Man's Sky. Sean Murray, also the programmer and uh, genius behind <laughs> No Man's Sky. Just take the compliment. I don't, I've never seen anything like this in a video game before. This is incredible. No Man's Sky is just that tedium forever because the combat isn't engaging and all you're trying to do is collect stuff to make more money, to buy yourself a better ship, to get to the center of the galaxy, to and who knows what. I, people have been there, and no one sounded too excited about it. So what awaits us in the center of the galaxy? Spiritual enlightenment, untold wealth, immortality. Peter Molyneux. Peter Molyneux. <laughs> Peter Molyneux. <laughs> Peter Molyneux. <laughs> Peter Molyneux. <laughs> Is it purely about rent finding your way and just somehow being lured by the center you of the can universe. select one at random if you want. I will do that. I will happily do that. It's always a worrying sign when companies decide to deny information to the consumer. Review copies of this game were not given to PC users at all. There was speculation as to why that would be. There was belief that the game was being polished up to the very last minute, which was supposedly substantiated by the fact that there was going to be a day one patch. Regardless of that, though, the day one patch was actually applied to the PlayStation version's launch several days before the PC version even came out, and yet review code was still not issued to those on PC. I was conned, and what we have now is a far cry from what we were told. And it's especially insulting when you realize that they decided to charge full price for what they knew wasn't the real thing. $60. It's still hard to say this is a good game. And like he says, the only reason why they've been able to improve the game is because of the mass interest that came before launch, which led to huge sales from misleading information and footage. If players had seen the game how it really was, it's hard to say No Man's Sky is successful at all. The, the communication here was clearly off. 
someone someone should have shut you up. Yeah. Because the game that you sold is not the game that gamers were able to buy. Few things tempt a pirate like the siren song of a lootable shipwreck. Careful though, there could be anything down there. Literally, there could be anything. We haven't finished designing it yet. Joking, that was a joke. Sea of Thieves has set sail, but players are already worried about the lack of current content and small amount of cosmetic items. Addressing those concerns, the game's executive producer Joe Neat told IGN, Sea of Thieves is designed from the ground up to be a game that grows and evolves, and we will release new cosmetic options ongoing as a part of that, alongside new mechanics and ways to play. There is nothing more to this game. All the stuff that was promised by Microsoft sounded great um, before the game released, but even in practice, um, the, th the things like the questline structures and things like that, they just don't work. Um, in the setting that you have them in now, in this $60 context, they just don't work. There's not enough to do. It's awesome to be here. And as I said to you earlier, Ryan, like you guys have been believers and supporters Absolutely. Of, a, of a new IP that we're super passionate about. No, we're uh, getting chickens again. Uh, More chickens. You're on IG Plays Live. Uh, I'm going to look for another ship on the horizon as well. If we see it, I want to go ham. Maybe they have chickens. Maybe they have all the chickens we could ever need. I'm ADDing up here, looking for, looking for fun. Look what we just did with our time. Like, realistically, we just went, we got chickens, and we came back. We went south, got chickens, north, turned it in. We got nothing. Obviously, that's not the way well, the game is yeah. supposed to work. I mean, the, the nothing thing is, is an issue. But definitely I would rather thing. have fun. I think five days out of seven, yeah. we, we were, like, the number one watched game. So, I mean, it suffice it to say, your expectations for the reception of the beta was just... Yeah, that totally eclipsed. And by. on on a relatively small slice yeah. of content. Yes, I'd be lying if I said I enjoy getting chickens and pigs. And uh... you got the well, are these chickens drowned? Well, right. That's gotta be that's gotta be a good feeling. No, then you got you got a lot more in the back pocket. Well, I, our constraints were: hey, let's keep it kind of like the tech alpha. Let's not put a load of stuff in. Like so, step by step notification. There's. Uh, a lot of a lot of folks calling it no man's sea, just because. Yeah, I mean, rabbit. guys, it's day one. You know? For sure. With um, that with that said, like absolutely, I, I agree. Yeah. Let's like, and you you predict this stuff. You go, hey, if it's only people from our tech alpha, from our insiders, we know there's like four hundred thousand there, and they've all kind of played before, so not all of them will show up. So maybe we'll, like maybe it'd be a couple of hundred thousand, still pretty mm -hmm. decent scale. And then pre-orders, like, hey, how many pre-orders will be at that stage? Are oh, probably this, and not all of them will show up. And and every and there's not much content. So like, I, f I honestly feel jaded, and it's day one. But every, like. We just proved all that wrong. People, like more people turned mm. up. I do not want to walk around the island looking for chickens. They played for longer. For a game that that carries itself on how much fun you can have, this is like the least fun thing. They streamed. Is this game worth a buy? My answer for sixty dollars now. People will say, hey, when when I'm uh, fetching treasure quests or treasure chests, I get a voyage, I go out, I get a chest, I go back to the outpost. Mm. And if I, even I'm describing that to you now, that kind of sounds boring. It's awesome because you're digging up treasure and it's like it's very cool emotionally. But what we actually see players do once they've played a few times is not do that. What they do is they go get a load of voyages, they spend all their money on voyages, and then they go out and then they start chaining together yeah. voyage to voyage to voyage to voyage to voyage. So you get these scenarios where they have 20 chests. Some people will just want uh, quests that they just want to jump into and they know that they can you know, play for 20, 30 minutes, get yeah. rewards, and then go back and start customizing their ship. As you guys know, I am a great pirate. Everything worked out well and I finally delivered my treasure and got my giant payment of around 80 coins. Just 70,000 more coins and I'll finally be able to get a colored sail for my ship. Voyage to 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 voyage. And I'm just sat there playing the game wondering, why aren't there more exciting quests in this game? There's just so much potential. Why, for instance, are there not quests where you take out AI captains or AI ghost ships? Developers are always working on something, and I have to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the current era that we're in in video games where a you're literally playing an early access build 
Sea of Thieves is a colossal disappointment, and yet one more game in a steadily growing list of massively overhyped, bare-bones, full-price, $60 release titles that offer less than $20 worth of content. Now, Rare has announced that they will be releasing content over time. Okay, well, let's think about that for a moment. A game released for people to play that is in a state of active development and is launched with only the barest amount of playable content. We all know what that is. It's an early access game. Games released unfinished with a promissory note of further content that is in development and will be released over time. Say hello to the future of games as live services that are bound to an attempted subscription model. Hello everyone, my name is Joe Neat, uh, I'm the executive producer on Sea of Thieves and we wanted to start a new series of videos really where we were just talking about uh, the kind of top status of what's going on. Um, we're looking at getting into that rhythm of adding new little features, adding new content as, as we move forward um, and really growing on the kind of um, the base of Sea of Thieves that we, that we launched with. <laughs> With next week's build, um, just wanted to give a little bit more information again around what's what's coming there. So um, public and private matchmaking is the big one. We've split the team um, into three different kind of game teams that are looking after each update. So there's the Hungering Deep, uh, there's Curse Sales, and there's Forsaken Shores. So next week we release the Hungering Deep. We're really excited to be bringing kind of new content to see if Thieves in this way. So there's a bunch of new features coming um, in, in this update. We're going to be having skeleton thrones scattered around the world that you're going to have to find. You know, the Hungering Deep is really just the start because this is our first content update. It's our first toe in the water, so to speak. Um, <laughs> And I think quite a, quite a lot of people were like, give me reasons to replay it, give me reasons to go back in and earn other stuff, like uh, make it a bit longer, like basically just kind of stretch it out. Uh, our next build your adventure uh, is called The Sunken Curse, and that's going to be coming next week. So uh, currently just the final bit to play test and polish around that. And next big update to the game is, is our Curse Sales uh, update, the introduction of the, the skeleton ships, the AI ships into, into Sea of Thieves. And, like, it's, a very, it's very complex. And uh, in the world, these kind of cursed mermaid statues have now appeared. Uh, they're going to be around the kind of uh, uh, sunken reefs in the world and around islands. And so you're going to have to work together um, with other members of your crew to destroy these. You may have noticed over the last few weeks we've been in, like accidentally introducing little issues into the build that we did, wouldn't want to be introducing. Every time we get feedback that, hey, something's broken, like, obviously that really frustrates us too, as, as, as the game creators, not just you, the players. Freddie Prince Jr. In the meantime, I wanted to take the time to answer the number one question that I get asked all the time, which is, what has changed about No Man's Sky since launch? And a lot has changed. I think somebody said it great this week on your guys' show, where they're like, it's finally out of alpha, and it's finally out of beta. It's no Man's yeah, Sky like... has finally released. Yeah. We've had three major updates, so, Atlas Rises, Foundation, Pathfinder, um, together with our biggest update to date, Next, which is coming out real soon. Name for one disease yeah. back then. It's called everything scurvy. That's it. <laughs> but, um, that and rats. But I think that the magic of Sea of Thieves is how all of the mechanics interact. Right? You've got some tools we give players, like they're firing yourself out of cannons, like you're seeing here, which 
can be used in a myriad of ways. I like that right? he got a little hurt yeah. when he landed, yeah. by the way. Yeah, and by the way, <laughs> that, that took us about 82 shots to actually get, to allow oh, that wow. one. Because this is all gameplay, all done by our video team, and they hate us for not giving them better tools. <laughs> so yeah. then that's but, not, um, probably not the most suggested <laughs> strategy for a situation like yeah. If it's a 1 in 82 shot to do that, like... Yeah. It's so but, satisfying if it works. If you yes. could do it, yeah. But, but to land it perfectly and to kind of um, get it. And then this, sorry, this shot here as well, um, just when he looks at the ship and it gets hit by lightning. Again, this was actually, this is luck in terms of the lightning doing this. And so at, the, at this point, yeah. our video team are like, OK, we now need to nail the rest of this shot, because <laughs> otherwise it's gone, right? And, um, but it's such a, but that's, that's the thing, that all these things will happen in the game, right? This is, we didn't script the lightning strike, it just mm -hmm. happened. Um, and uh, like, this is, you know, we did script the shock, but, um, <laughs> you know, we did script the shock, but. Um, <laughs> That is not a beast you want to pick a fight with. Yes, it's possible to take on these toothy terrors of the deep, but you're not much used to your crew bitten in two. Oh dang, I'm coming. Just gonna die. Can I kill you? Uh, South Let me start attacking you when you play the music. <laughs> There's another one. Let's see if this one's friendly. Oh, oh shit. This... He's trying to sing. He wants to play with us. He likes the music. He's a friendly shark. Oh my god! It's okay, we all make mistakes. Are you a friend? Are you a friend, Shock? It's okay. It's okay. There, there, little Shock. There, there. I think he's trying to sing. Yeah, he was, he was trying to bite you. Bite you, bite you, bite you.